in this video we are going to discuss in detail about sulfate reducing bacteria its causes its impacts on cooling water system and how to test sulfate reducing bacteria in cooling water system please subscribe water doctor for more and more water treatment related videos sulfate reducing bacteria is basically an aerobic bacteria that bacteria grows in absence of oxygen sulfate reducing bacteria can survive under various conditions of ph and temperature we all know that sulfate is a major component of cooling water system we add sulfate in cooling tower through sulfuric acid as well as our makeup water also contains sulfate ions so what happens in heat exchangers if sulfate reducing bacteria is present then that bacteria will use that sulfate ion as a food sulfate reducing bacteria will convert sulfate ions into h2s gas and that h2s gas is very very corrosive so with the passage of time hydrogen sulfide will react iron metallurgy and convert iron into iron sulfide we all know sulfate reducing bacteria is commonly found in our water reservoir we can see sulfate reducing bacteria in our common raw water reservoirs you will observe a black slime or blackish material at the bottom of the water in many ponds and that blackish material is basically sulfate reducing bacteria we all know that our heat exchanger whether they are made up of carbon steel or stainless steel they contain iron so sulfate reducing bacteria will create a pinhole in ss heat exchanger and in carbon steel heat exchangers because both contain iron however impact of sulfate reducing bacteria on copper alloys is very low because copper is naturally disinfectant and it has been used for centuries to effectively kill microorganisms so if our cooling water system has higher contamination of organic matters sulfate reducing bacteria growth chances are much higher in these systems for example edc vcm plant has contamination of edc vcm lubile kerosene oil and natural gas so it has been observed that sulfate reducing bacteria growth is much higher in heat exchangers of edc vcm plants similarly sulfate reducing bacteria has been found much higher in refineries because of the environment of the refineries if we are using canal water and that water contains high organics then sulfate reducing bacteria growth chances are still high it has been noted that if our cooling water system has more and more suspended solids in it then these suspended solids will settle down in the heat exchangers and will provide an ideal environment for the growth of sulfate reducing bacteria so the best strategy to overcome sulfate reducing bacteria growth in our cooling water system is number 1 control suspended solids as low as possible 10 ppm suspended solids in cooling water system will be an ideal approach to be maintained to control sulfate sulfate reducing bacteria growth secondly we must add sufficient quantity of general and biodispersant because that dispersant will remove deposits from the surface of the heat exchangers and will provide clean surface ultimately sulfate reducing bacteria growth will stop in these heat exchangers thirdly we should have frequency of dosing specialized non oxidizing biocides there are different kinds of oxidizing biocides but some biocides are more effective for the killing of sulfate reducing bacteria as compared to other biocides so if we are shock dosing these biocides at a specified interval 
we will have less chances of growth of sulfate reducing bacteria. Let's suppose we have heat exchangers where cooling water velocity is below 0.8 meter per second and we can't increase velocity of these heat exchangers. So what should we do? The best strategy will be to satellite dose general antibiodispersant in these heat exchangers. If we can't dose general antibiodispersant in these heat exchangers, then we must adopt air rambling techniques. Air rambling will remove deposits from the surface of the heat exchangers and will provide clean surface which will ultimately reduce growth of sulfate resistant bacteria. We should also arrange backwashing facilities for such heat exchangers where we see the chances of sulfate resistant bacteria growth are much higher because backwashing will also prevent deposition of suspended solids and will ensure clean surface. So these four techniques will help us to mitigate the growth of sulfate reducing bacteria. We should be well aware that as per NACE, 30 to 40 percent corrosion in heat exchangers are related to microbiologically induced corrosion. Sulfate reducing bacteria are the major sources of microbiologically induced corrosion. So if we are maintaining sulfate reducing bacteria, well within the limit in our system, then MIC chances will be low.